flying in today. What time did you get in? About 2 o'clock, 2.30. This afternoon. So what kind of, oh, I don't think I don't know if it'll have any effect. Um, I mean, it's just one day. It's not like we did it five days in a row, you know. So it's just one day of inconvenience. Um, I can't imagine it being a problem. Doc, knowing your team the way you do, after hello, a how are you? <laughs> after a tough road trip, how do you expect them to respond? Finally, being back home and right here. Right? Well, you hope they respond well. I mean, that's what we should do. We should respond that way after every game, not just road or home. So. Uh, we'll see. I mean, but you, uh, you always expect as a coach your, your team to play well every night, and when they don't, you're the first to be the most disappointed. Any, uh, any changes? I'm going to start Jet for sure uh, tonight. What, what is the benefit of that? Jet, not, nothing more than uh, right now until Avery comes back. For Jet, uh, he just doesn't get involved when Rondo's not on the floor, when he's not playing with Rondo. Uh, I mean, he had two shots last night, so uh, it's more, it has nothing to do with anybody else. It's more just trying to keep Jet involved, and uh, he needs to be out on the floor with a point guard that can deliver the ball to him. And, um, you know, when he's with the other group, he can get the ball. When Avery eventually comes back. Yeah, then it'll be easy. Uh, you know, we'll see. Considering other changes for tonight as well? Yeah. yeah. What other changes might you do? Uh, not talking to the media anymore <laughs> is the first one. Uh, leaving the media session earlier is the second one. Uh, well, I'm thinking about Jason uh, just because of the size. And, uh, you know, I've been talking about it a lot, but we just haven't done it. I've been trying to find ways of getting Kevin off the five spot all game. And right now, even when we bring the other guys in, the same guy's guard him and he's stuck in the same position. The only way you can force the action is with Jason. So what are the pros and cons of doing that? Uh, that's the pros. I just told you them. Uh, the cons are, you know, he's not as good offensively. Uh, but I think he can make it up defensively. He's, a, he's our second best pick setter as well. And if you're going to play Jason in the starting lineup, Jason Terry now, you know, because we have two, uh, <laughs> you need another pick setter. Doc, Jason Collins, I mean, he's kind of your more, more, most physical guy, too. I mean, yeah. He doesn't mind laying a guy out. I can't say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's a, a terrible thing. His physicality is a benefit, a caveat. Yeah, it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very wise statement you made. Yeah. Doc, what would you tell your team about a team that's coached by a guy like Byron Scott? Uh, that Byron was a dirty player when he played. <laughs> no, I'm joking. He's, uh, it's going to be a hard-playing team well-conditioned team, a team that plays extremely hard. Uh, when you look at all the injuries they've had, they've had a ton of them. And they've not only had them, you hate to say this, but they've had them to key guys. Uh, it makes it a hard job, uh, especially when you're young, uh, that they are. And yet when you see them play, they're in every game and they play hard. Byron's had a lot of the same complaints about the new voice lately, about consistent after yeah. quarter and quarter. Why is it a veteran team that a rookie team holds struggle with that? Well, uh, I think veteran teams struggle with it at times because they're looking ahead. And uh, young teams struggle with it because they just don't know how. You know, I've always laughed when you hear that college kids play harder and all that, and then they get up to the league and they realize college kids don't play harder. They just play faster and out of control, and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, when you get up to this level, it's, it's hard, intense basketball, and it's focused basketball. And you can see to a man um, – you know, that's the difference. And it's hard when you have that many young guys on a team. Uh, you know, I will say this. They have the one guy that can teach them all, and he does, uh, Berejo. I mean, he's, he's just a joy to watch. And you can see that in their play. You can see that in Thompson's play now um, and um, Zeller, that playing with that guy every day, as John Gruden would say, <laughs> it makes you uh, it, it makes you take notice, and I think he's been a great teacher for their bigs. Not, not just statistically, is 